Hi, this is Mike Henderson in New York at Strata and Hadoop World. I'm here with Eric Frenkiel. Frenkiel, yeah. Yep. And you're the CEO for MemSQL. That's right. And MemSQL is a in-memory SQL database system? That's right. Uh, we've built an in-memory row engine uh, that is used for real-time analytics, and we just shipped a uh, columnar engine on flash and disk that gives you historical data access. So why would you want to ship on flash and disk? So um, it's a really interesting uh, evolution in the, in the in-memory market around uh, data technologies. In the last 12 months, there's been literally three new types of in-memory database technologies. There was always the traditional uh, memory only, in-memory database, so whatever would fit in memory is what you had. The next one is what we define ourselves as, it's a memory first database. We will write to memory first and then put that data into a columnar format for you on flash or disk. So more of a tiered approach. And then the new one is Oracle's 12C announcement, which is a memory second database. It basically has to be written to disk first and then it's pushed up into the uh, memory bank as a columnar cache. So it's literally three types of databases now, you, uh, however you slice and dice. And so why is the third model needed? Um, it's Oracle's way of uh, staying relevant in the in-memory market quickly. Uh, there's some real advantages to do a uh, memory second approach. You have full backward compatibility with Oracle uh, uh, PL SQL, um, but it doesn't actually solve your writes. You're only getting a modest improvement on your write speed. You do improve your, write, your reads because they're being served from memory now uh, with the call and cache, but I definitely think that the memory first option is superior uh, because it gives you that flexibility. You can have all that data flowing in to the in-memory uh, engine, and then as it decays in age or value, you just basically put it into the columnar format and store it forever on disk. So if we, if we rewind 12 months from today, yeah. and we look at what you guys have done in the last 12 months, mm -hmm. and then if we fast forward another 12 months to next year, right. where are you going to start and where are you going to be next year? So a year ago, we were um, just uh, announcing the Columnar engine. Um, in this year, we actually shipped it in June. Uh, so it's now generally available. That's been a great, uh, uh, real, a lot of um, uh, joy to see that uh, ship now because it fulfills a broader vision for the company. 12 months into the future, uh, you know, beyond, you know, some, uh, you know, speculation and whatnot aside, uh, we'll continue to add more extensibility to the product. Um, so that's something that is uh, very exciting because you can um, interact, interact with the, the system in a, in a more robust way. So what do you think about Apache, Apache Spark and the whole Hadoop ecosystem? I think it's very exciting. I mean, um, Apache Spark is really a breath of fresh air um, in Hadoop, principally because Hadoop is a great file system. It was never a great execution engine. MapReduce is going the way of the Dodo, and it always should have been. Um, Apache Spark is, I think, a modern execution engine. Gives you the ability to actually run that custom code quickly, uh, but it's also there so that you can actually uh, connected with more interesting libraries like MLlib for machine learning, GraphX for graph theory. Um, we're very excited about it because it is an extensible execution engine. It's not a database, it's not durable, it's not transactional, uh, but it does fulfill a very interesting part of the Hadoop ecosystem, which is a very nice way to manipulate data, explore it. Uh, it's perfect for the data scientist. Okay, and then, so analytics is part of this whole uh, space as well. Yes. So how do you see the importance of uh, real-time analytics and maybe even ad auctioning or, or whatever sure. in that ad bidding? I would say that with Hadoop having solved the big data problem, right, there's an easy way to put petabytes of data on disk. The next you know, phase of, of, of the frontier is real-time. Uh, customers now have a lot of data they have to work with. Um, they don't want to wait for it. Uh, the need to ETL data from an OLTP to an OLAP system um, that's really taxing. So real-time analytics gives you access to your data as it's flowing in. Spark is a great uh, way to work with real-time data. But MemSQL has always been there to provide that transactional guarantee and that scale-out approach to commodity hardware. So uh, we see uh, most of our business actually in real-time analytics. It surfaces in different types of use cases, operational uh, monitoring, fraud detection, uh, real-time bidding and attribution within ad tech, risk management, order management within financial services, um, and within e-commerce, uh, you know, uh, real-time recommendations. So that's an interesting spectrum of data-driven industries. Um, what I get most excited about is the intersection of our technology along two trends, one of which is uh, very mature, one of which was very new. The first trend is cloud. Cloud is now a generally accepted paradigm within an enterprise. Our software runs great on that environment. 
But the new trend that I think is going to be really picking up steam in the next few years is IoT, Internet of Things. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you need a fast database to work with IoT. Uh, and what we're seeing, a lot of our customers, like in oil and gas and financial services, for example, are really struggling with the amount of data that's now flowing in. A lot more sensors, devices, people. Uh, you need a database like MemSQL to actually work with it. And so, in that you need a database like MemSQL, you also need to have a hybrid approach. Yes. With both transactional and um, uh, analytical. That's right. Processing going on. And what what benefits would a business get by having a hybrid type approach? So that that hybrid approach is um, sort of intersecting uh, OLTP and OLAP together. Um, and the, the real benefit is that there's no more ETL, or r rather maybe there's drastically reduced ETL. You can basically um, avoid the need to shuttle data from one system to the next, and uh, it gives you a real ability to get access to it instantly, respond to changing market conditions or user uh, uh, reactions or, or uh, uh, interactions, and it gives you um, a speed of, of access to your data that you might not have had before. I like that instantaneous, I, I actually don't like the word real time, because mm -hmm. I think real time can be it just happens on a time. Right. You know, it could be two years and it happens precisely on that time. Every time is years. relative. Right. But instantaneous yep. is something that I think we're all moving towards and, and want to see in the market. So instantaneous uh, auctioning, mm -hmm. uh, information served up to your users. Right. More companies need to go there. How do they get there? Um, using memory um, and using a distributed system. So uh, the era of you know a monolithic you know supercomputer that's serving a database uh, application is it's it's really waning. Um, our belief is that more companies should have access to Facebook style scale out and Facebook style analytics. My co-founder and myself, we spent time at Facebook seeing how it was done, and it really is amazing what you can do with commodity hardware. Uh, the ability to basically scale out on you know two socket servers is what's changing the game for in memory and real time access. So uh, memory is cheaper, of course. That's Moore's law in many ways as it uh, relates um, to uh, Intel uh, processors. But memory is dropping, uh, and uh, memory prices is dropping. And I think that's exciting because now companies can afford to go real time, whereas in the past it really was just restricted to the te to the telecommunications industry. Interesting, yeah. interesting. So where do you see MemSQL going? 18 months from now. Gosh, well, 18 months is a long time in startup land. Um, I, I think startup land. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't that a couple years ago? <laughs> we're still a startup. We're always we're all the, the we're still one percent done. Is how we see it. There's so much to do in the uh, in yeah. the, this market in this this area, um, and we're going to continue to push the boundaries of what's possible. Um, I think we saw in memory happening four years ago. We're turning four uh, actually in February around the next time of, of Strata. Um, so that's our four year anniversary and there's still a lot to do. I mean, the Columnar engine was very exciting. Uh, we have more extensibility along the way. Um, so I'm excited to see what happens in the next 18 months as well. Excellent, we look forward to seeing you in the future. Likewise, thanks, thanks so much.